Chairs No Waiting, episode number 535, Easy Mayberry Trivia. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at Weaver's Department Store.com. And boy, we've got something new over at Weaver's this week. That's right, you can get a Mayberry Patrol Car license plate, a North Carolina 1963 black and yellow JL327 license plate. That's right, it's embossed, it's made out of aluminum. The embossed means the letters are raised. A great thing to get. Check that out over at Weaver's Department Store. And while you're there, check out the hair sh- hairstyle print. It's from over at Floyd's Barbershop. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. An executive producer of tonight's episode is one of our patrons at Patreon, uh, Mike McGonigal. So thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to have all of you here with me in Mayberry. The chat room's full of people. It's so good to have you here with us. So what we're going to do this evening, we've had several episodes of Two Chairs No Waiting that have been about, I don't know, trivia. Yeah, you know, that's trivia. We've done a lot of trivia stuff. And tonight, what we're going to do is some easier trivia. That's right. You know, some of the trivia we've done has been harder than others, like the Mayberry Days trivia. If you guys want to go back and listen to those and try to answer the questions, then others have been fairly easy. But I'm afraid they were only easy for me and you. You know, there's a lot of people that may not be quite as big of Mayberry fans as perhaps you and I are because you know you're here for the podcast I talk about the Andy Griffith show every week now granted I can't remember anything anymore so I'm not sure I would know the answers to these questions but these should be a little bit easier and a little bit more fun for the non uh diehard let's say diehard fan of the Andy Griffith show it's just somebody who enjoys watching the show but it's not, you know, not interested in knowing the, I don't know, the tag number on the airplane that ain't B flew when she did her flying lessons, <laughs> you know, but it enjoys it. So that's what we're going to do. So this will be a great episode to be able to share with people and just have fun. And after we finish up with this, and there's several questions, I forgot how many, I think 20. Uh, so we got 20 questions. I'm going to run through them a little quicker than normal because I think they're easier. If you think you know the answer and you want to think about it a second, you can pause the podcast. Okay, so this is this is a media where you can actually pause. So pause it, and then we'll that way I can kind of move through the episode answers and questions a little bit quicker. Then we're going to hear from Randy Turner, as I said, for this week in Mayberry history, talking about Jack Bannon. Do you know about Jack Bannon? I didn't. So let me get some background music for us going here with, uh, I think we'll use the VW Boys because I love the VW Boys. And plus, I just like the Mockingbird song as background for trivia. It just sounds like trivia to me. I don't know. All right, guys, let's go for some easy Mayberry trivia. Easy Mayberry trivia. And we'll decide whether it's easy as we go. All right. So question number one. Everybody ready? What was Sheriff Andy's last name? Oh, I'm not even going to read it twice. What was Sheriff Andy's last name? I did read it twice. His last name, here it comes, pause if you don't know, is Sheriff Andy Taylor. His last name is Taylor. Taylor. So keep up with these. Folks in our chat room, I'm sure, are going, oh, no, I didn't get it. (laughs) So let's go. What was Sheriff Andy's last name? It was Taylor. So, question two. Question two. What is the name of Andy's aunt? Oh. See, this is for people that love the Andy Griffith Show, but don't watch it all the time and may not know every answer. What is the name of Andy's aunt? Her name is Aunt B. It's B. Taylor. Beatrice Taylor. And it's Aunt B. And it's spelled B-E-E. I know people are going to be mad and dis- and not like that answer, but it's B-E-E, not B-E-A. Beatrice is correct, but it's still spelled B. If you can make the name James into Jim, you can make Beatrice into B. All right. Question th- three. <laughs> Today we know him as a famous director. But in the Andy Griffith show, he played Andy's son, Opie. Who is he? 
Oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> Who played Andy's son that's a famous director now? Everybody ready? The answer is Ron Howard. Ron Howard played Opie Taylor when he was a child. Okay. All right. So you guys, how you doing? How you doing? So these, we're easing you into these. They're going to be, they get a little bit harder as we go along. Question number four. Name Andy's cousin on the Andy Griffith Show. Name Andy's cousin on the Andy Griffith Show. This is question four. The answer is, I think some of you probably know this one. This is actually a little bit harder because it's only mentioned on a few episodes and there's controversy surrounding it. But the answer is Deputy Barney Fife worked with Andy, but he was also his cousin. Andy's cousin was Barney. I want to thank you, Cousin Andy. All right, let's move along. No no arguing about the answer because they actually said it on the show. It is, he was cousin. All right, number five, number five. <laughs> Where did Aunt B live? Now, don't overthink this question. Don't overthink this question. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to give you some, uh, you get some answers. You, I'll give you, a, if you get this right, where did Aunt B live? I'll give you some uh, leeway on this one because it's a little vague. If, a little vague. Where did Aunt B live? Not Francis Bavier. Where did, France, where did Aunt B live? Aunt B lived in Mayberry. That was the town where Aunt B lived. She lived with Andy and Opie. Now, Aunt B had moved off and had lived for a five-year period in Morgantown, West Virginia. And when Andy's housekeeper, Rose, got married and left, she came back to take care of Andy and Opie. So she lived, I would have accepted she lived with Andy and Opie. That's a good answer. She lived in Mayberry. That's a good answer. So remember, she helped raise Andy. So Andy grew up in Mayberry as well. So she's lived in Mayberry. Okay. Oh, a little tricky question. Hopefully you guys got it. That was number five. How are you doing? How are you doing on it? Number five. Number six. Here we go. How many bullets did Deputy Barney Fife have? How many bullets did Deputy Barney Fife have? I should add, how many bullets did Deputy Barney Fife have at any one time? <laughs> yeah, most of the time. Maybe that's a better answer. The answer is how many bullets did he have? Barney was only allowed to have one bullet. He had to keep it in his pocket, except in emergencies. Yeah, Andy won't let him hit in his gun. He has to keep it in his pocket. <laughs> so there you go. Barney was only allowed to have one bullet, and he kept it in his shirt pocket. All right. Number seven. Who is the barber in Mayberry? And if you listen to this podcast and do not get this right, I expect a, a hundred sentences of the barber in Mayberry is followed by his name. Uh, and and mail, email to me uh, right after the podcast is over. So who is the barber in Mayberry? <laughs> his name is Floyd. Floyd Lawson. He was Mayberry's barber. I, yeah, the... Barber in Mayberry is Floyd. The barber in Mayberry is Floyd. A hundred times on the chalkboard and take a picture of it and mail it to me. Email it to me. Okay? If you didn't get that right. Floyd Lawson. It really hurts me if you didn't get that one. All right. Number eight. Number eight. Where did Barney keep his bullets? Oh, no. I think I may have given you the answer on that in a minute ago. Did you pay attention? Where did Barney keep his bullets? Where did Barney keep his bullets? Well, it wasn't bullets. <laughs> and his gun's not right. It was in his pocket. Because he, only had, he had to keep his one bullet in his pocket. We already talked about that a minute ago, didn't we? His shirt pocket. Even a better answer. Shirt pocket. Left shirt pocket. If you really want to get uh, down to it. Left shirt pocket. But I'll take pocket. That's a good answer. All right. Woo, how are you doing? That was eight questions. Have you gotten eight, seven, four? Hope you're doing well. These, I think these are fairly easy for most of us. I think it is for you. I don't know. Number nine. What show was the Andy Griffith Show a spinoff of? Okay, what show was Andy Griffith Show a spinoff of? 
Oh, so now this one's a little bit harder. I think this is a little bit harder. A lot of casual fans may not know this. So if you don't know it, don't feel too bad. What show is Andy Griffith show a spinoff of? It was a spinoff of the Danny Thomas show with Danny Thomas. Uh, that was the first place we ever saw Sheriff Andy Taylor was on the Danny Thomas show. Now, a lot of people want to say that it was make room for daddy. That's not correct, but I'll give it to you on this case. But the Danny Thomas show was titled Make Room for Daddy during its first three seasons. That would have been from 1953 to 1956. But by the time Andy actually appeared in 1960 or 59, it would have been, or actually 60, 1960, it would have been the Danny Thomas show. Okay. All right. So good job if you got it. That was a pretty, that was a little harder. A little bit harder. Okay. So, all right, here we go. Next question, number 10. How many Emmy Awards did Don Knotts win for the Andy Griffith Show? So again, this may be for a casual fan, may not be a real easy answer. How many Emmy Awards did Don Knotts win for the Andy Griffith Show? All right, I'll give you a hint. It's the same as the number on his watch. On the back of his watch. Uh, you see what it says on the back of his watch there, Bernie? You see what it says? He says five. Yeah, Don Knotts won five Emmy Awards for playing Deputy Barney Fife. There you go. And Aunt B, Frances Bavier, she won one Emmy. You know how many Andy won? It's not a trivia question, but he didn't win any. Isn't that sad? All right, number 11. What is Andy Taylor's marital status? What is Andy Taylor's marital status? So I think you should know this one. Folks should be able to give me the answer on that one. What is Andy Taylor's marital status? He was, here comes the answer, positive if you don't know. Andy was a widower. His wife passed away shortly after Opie was born and Aunt B and Rose came to stay with him and then eventually Aunt B. All right, so there you go. That's number 11. Number 11. Number 12. How long did the Andy Griffith Show run? How many? How long was it on? How long did the Andy Griffith Show run? Okay, that's also not an easy one for everybody. So the answer is, how long did the Andy Griffith Show run? The Andy Griffith Show ran from October 1960 to April 1st, 1968. So it was October the 3rd until April the 1st, 1968, it was eight seasons. So good job if you got it. Eight is the answer, eight years. All right, uh, number 13. I don't like this one, because it's 13. How many episodes were made in that time? In, that, in those eight seasons, how many episodes of the Andy Griffith Show did they make? Oh, that's a little harder. See, these get a little bit harder. How many episodes of the Andy Griffith Show are there? Not counting the pilot episode. We're not counting that one. The Andy Griffith Show itself. How many episodes were there? Their answer is there are 249 episodes of the Andy Griffith Show. 159 uh, in seasons one through five. They were black and white. 159 of them. 90 episodes were in color. That was the, the color seasons were seasons six, seven, and eight. And so there's 249 total, 249. All right, number 14. How many episodes did Andy Griffith appear in of the Andy Griffith Show? So how many episodes was Andy in? Of those 249, how many was Andy in? Hmm. Probably never counted them, have you? Uh, yeah, so how many episodes did Andy Griffith appear in? Now these are a little bit harder. This question, and we got another one coming up. The answer, and several people in our chat room are getting it right. I will accept that. Uh, people, it was, oh, it's not 259. That's wrong. I typed that wrong. 249 episodes. 49. Oh, I don't even leave that up there. 249 episodes. He was in every episode of the Andy Griffith Show. Okay? Not 259. There weren't 259. He was in 249 episodes. So ignore what was on the graphic if you were watching the video. If you're just watching or just listening online, then uh, on the audio, then it's no problem. Number 15. 
How many Andy Griffith Show episodes did Ronnie Howard appear in? Now, this is a hard one. I wouldn't have known this one. How many episodes of the Andy Griffith Show did Ronnie Howard appear in? So, Andy was in all 249. So, how many was Ron Howard in? Now, this see, this is a little bit harder. This is not fun and easy. This is not easy. This is, this one's a little hard. But we had to differentiate the, you know, the experts from the rest. So, so the answer is, if you're ready, there may be some controversy on the answer. The answer is Ron Howard was in, it does, it says all, was in 201 episodes Okay, of the Andy Griffith Show. IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, lists Ron Howard as being in 225 episodes, but 21 of those are just credits only, which means he didn't actually appear in the episode, but he was in the credits. So those don't count. We're talking about how many he was in. So he was in 201 episodes. Mayberry.info that I run says that he was in 200 so we're still under review but we're going if you gave uh answer of 201 or 200 score i'll give you either one okay you got it uh, we're going to check into that if one of our intrepid listeners would like to check and figure out how many episodes he was in by looking and actually seeing which episodes he was in that would be great but uh, 201 is how many it would be if uh, if he was really in 225 uh, is credited but 21 of them were credits only so there's a possibility there was a set, another one so anyway between 200 and 201 episodes ron howard appeared in okay so feel free to go and figure out what the right answer is and let me know <laughs> number 16 this is a trick question be careful what was the name of the andy griffith theme song okay what was the name of the andy griffith theme song Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky question. Don't overthink. Okay. What was the name of the Andy Griffith theme song? Now, I'm going to give you credit if you answer with really what's not the right answer, but I'm going to give you credit. Okay. Because that means you, you, you knew this. All right. So the Andy Griffith, what was the name of the Andy Griffith theme song? I'm fixing to show you or tell you. The name of the Andy Griffith show theme song is the Andy Griffith show theme that's the music. That's the actual music you hear at the beginning of the episode. Lyrics were later added to that music, and that song is called The Fishing Hole. And it was written, the lyrics were written by Everett Sloan, Jubal Foster, Jubal, Jubal, Jubal. That's who that was. And, of course, the music was written by Earl Hagen and Herbert Spencer. Okay. Oh, that was a little tricky. I told you. Don't let it trick you. The name of the, the actual theme song of the Andy Griffith Show is just the Andy Griffith Show theme. And you can get a CD with it on it over at Weavers, and it'll say Andy Griffith Show theme, and then the fishing hole is a different song. Oh, it's a trick. What a dumb trick. All right. Number 17. Who ran the service station in Mayberry? Now, I'll accept two different answers, perhaps three. Depends on what you answer. Who ran the service station there in Mayberry? Okay. So the answers I am looking for, for who ran the service station, I'm going to give you three different answers you can have answered, and I'll give you credit for any of them. The answers are the service station attendants were two cousins named Gomer Pyle, played by Jim Neighbors, and Goober Pyle, played by George, Lin George Lindsay. The station was owned by Wally, Wally Service was the name of the place, uh, who later sold it to Goober and it became Goober Service. So if you answered Gomer, Goober, or Wally, I'm going to give you the answer. I'll give you a credit. Okay? So you, good job. Flora, that was a good answer too. That would have, uh, she did at least for a time. Flora, she ran it while Goober was out of town. So that's true. So we can give it to Flora as well. Folks in the chat room picked up Flora. So I'll give you that too. Except that one's, that was a little, she only was there for a little while. Okay, next question, number 18. Here we go. Who was often in the Mayberry drunk tank? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard it called that before. Who was often in the Mayberry drunk tank? Who was in the drunk tank all the time? All right. 
So the answer, I'm going to give it to you pretty quick because I think you already know. Who was often in the Mayberry drunk tank? Well, that would have been Otis Campbell, who was played by Hal Smith. He was always ending up in the drunk tank, well, really the Mayberry jail cell in Mayberry. Uh, he even locked himself up. He'd been deputized enough. He even had a key to the courthouse. He could get in and lock himself up. So there you go. Who was often in the drunk tank? It was Otis Campbell. All right. Next question, number 19. All right, we're almost done. Who is, is Barney Fife's girlfriend? Who is Barney Fife's girlfriend? Uh, come on, you guys got to know this one. Now, his real girlfriend, by the way. Who was his girlfriend that everybody in town knew about? <laughs> the answer is Thelma Lou. Thelma Lou was Barney's girl. Now, she was played by actress Betty Lynn. Uh, and she was Barney's wife's girlfriend. Of course, there was uh, there was Juanita and, uh, and others, actually. But Thelma Lou was, in Barney's words, the only one I ever loved. You know, so it was Thelma Lou. All right. And so finally, last question. This will be number 20, but I called it bonus. Here, because you get it. The reason I call it bonus is because you're eligible for three points on this one. Bonus question. So you can get up to three points. Tell us some catchphrases that Gomer Pyle used on the Andy Griffith Show. Okay. So give me some catchphrases. You get a point for each up to three points. No more than three. Okay. So you can get up to three points. Some catchphrases by Gomer Pyle. So the chat room's going crazy. They're, they're getting some of them. All right. So... Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. There's somebody in there uh, put citizens arrest. I don't think that's a catchphrase, but I like it. That's a good answer. All right, so here are the answers. Okay, so there were three that I was going to accept. I really like uh, citizens arrest that somebody gave in the chat room. But here are the answers. And you may groan when you see these or you, or you hear them, but these are catchphrases that Gomer Pyle's always saying. Shazam! And another one was golly. And the third one that I was looking for was surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> I didn't see anybody do that one in the chat room. Did you get that one? Surprise, surprise, surprise. So those were the three I was looking for. You get one point for each one you got up to three. I really liked uh, citizen, citizens rest, citizens rest, but that wasn't one I was looking for. So that is all of our questions. So there were 20 questions total, but the last one you could have gotten three points. Three points if you got it, if you got those right. So grade yourself and let me know how you did. If you didn't get Floyd the Barber, I expect your sentences in by next week's podcast, okay? So email me your sentences written on a chalkboard and take a picture and email it to floyd at imayberry.com. And we'll display them here on the uh, <laughs> on the podcast and post them on our Facebook page. All right. All right. Uh, that is all I have for that. I hope you guys have enjoyed the Mayberry trivia. I hope it was fairly easy. That's what I was going for is kind of easy Mayberry trivia. I want you to have fun and just enjoy yourself. All right. So wrapping up tonight's episode, we have got a great bit of information from our roving reporter, 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 <laughs> Randy Turner, with this week in Mayberry history. So, Randy, take it away. Welcome to this week in Mayberry history, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Jack Bannon may have only appeared once in The Andy Griffith Show for a brief instant, but he had a successful career that spanned more than four decades with interesting connections to other well-known Hollywood actors. Jack was born in Los Angeles on June the 14th, 1940, and the first of those connections was there from birth. Jack was the son of Jim Bannon and B. Benaderet. Jack's father first became well known as a radio announcer during the golden age of radio for the Great Gildersleeve. 
but he is probably best remembered as the last of four actors to play Red Ryder in the final four films of the popular Western franchise. Jack's mother, B, also first became known in radio, where she was an expert in dialects. Beginning in 1943, and for more than 10 years, she was also the main female voice used by Warner Brothers for their legendary Merry Melodies and Looney Tunes shorts. Her only radio program lead role was on the short-lived Granby's Green Acres. While it lasted only eight episodes, it was remade as the popular TV sitcom Green Acres in the 1960s, as produced by Paul Henning. Paul first cast B as Cousin Pearl in the Beverly Hillbillies. Then, determined to find a starring role for her, created Petticoat Junction, where she was Kate Bradley, the owner of the Shady Rest Hotel. In 1963, Jack made his debut in his mother's show, Petticoat Junction, as the recurring character Roger Budd, a role he played half a dozen times between that year and the next. He then played nine other roles in Junction between 1965 and 69. Jack also was involved in two of Paul Henning's productions behind the scenes. Trained by his mother in dialects, Jack worked as a dialogue coach for Petticoat Junction during the 1964-65 season, then did the same on Green Acres for the 1965-66 season. He also acted in the Henning's other series. In 1964, he made his first of five appearances as different characters in the Beverly Hillbillies. He also played two small roles in 1965 and 66 episodes of Green Acres while he was serving as a dialogue coach for the show. Jack certainly acted in other episodic television as well. He appeared in more than 20 series in the 60s, such as The Man from Uncle, The Rat Patrol, and Here's Lucy. He played the recurring character John Holt twice in Lassie and appeared in seven episodes of Daniel Boone between 1967 and 68. And, of course, he appeared in The Andy Griffith Show. Midway through the final season, in The Mayberry Chef, Aunt B was asked to host a cooking show on a Cider City station. In what has to be one of the shortest guest shots in the series, Jack played the show's on-screen announcer, who was seen all of just over 16 seconds, though his voice is heard off-screen longer than that. Still, that's enough to make him part of the Mayberry family. Jack appeared as a captain in the classic 1970 Dustin Hoffman film, Little Big Man. He continued to work steadily in one-shot appearances throughout most of the decade, in series such as The Six Million Dollar Man, The Rockford Files, and Charlie's Angels. But in 1977, he began the role for which he is definitely best known. He played Art Donovan, the assistant editor in Lou Grant, appearing in all 114 episodes until the series ended in 1982. In 1983, Jack starred in Trauma Center, a series of which only nine of the 13 episodes filmed were actually aired. The year proved better in a more important way for Jack, he married Ellen Travolta, John Travolta's older sister, likely best known for playing Fonzie's aunt and Chachi's mother in Happy Days and Joni Loves Chachi. In 1988, Jack played Dr. Willoughby in eight episodes of the soap opera Santa Barbara and returned in 1991 for 14 episodes as Nathaniel Marley. Jack and Ellen were major supporters of a summer theater program in Idaho where they also maintained a vacation home. Jack passed away from cancer while there in 2017 at the age of 77. He had continued to act up to his death with his final role in a film that was released after he died. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Well, thank you, Randy. And if you don't make sure... You if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the great stuff that Randy has going on on the internet, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he will make sure you don't miss anything. It's turnersgrade 
at gmail.com. Randy, thanks again for that great report. I didn't know anything about Jack Bannon. Randy does it every week. He keeps, seems to find things that I had no idea about. So that was a lot of fun to hear. Folks, I hope you had a lot of fun tonight on tonight's episode. Did you do good? How did you do? Did you get the, most of the questions right? Do you feel pretty good about yourself? Go out there and share this episode with your friends that are Mayberry fans, but not quite as Mayberry fan as you. <laughs> they'll do good on the trivia, and they might have a good time, and maybe we'll get them hooked here on the podcast, and they'll join us weekly. So I want to thank everybody that's in the chat room that's uh, here visiting with me live on Monday nights. If you'd like to do that, we record at 8 o'clock Eastern time. If you go to live.twochairsnowaiting.com, and you'll be able to find us there. And uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Folks in the chat room, they have a great time uh, just visiting with one another and making comments and everything. So one of the things they've been talking about, uh, I think some of Gomer's, Gomer's catchphrases, and they were listening off things like Kentucky Mike said, go up an alley and holler fish. And I ain't taking it back either. <laughs> they were saying things like that. There's been a lot. She's an eight cylinder. She'll take eight. You know, all kinds of Gomer quotes. But those weren't really catchphrases, guys. I can't give you credit for those. But they're still fun. And I hope you guys can come and join us sometime with all the fun that we have here live on the show. So, folks, thanks for being here. I'd love to hear from you. If you didn't get your answers right or Floyd the Barber, I expect those sentences turned in by next podcast. But if you did get them, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at floyd at imabry.com or you can call me at 888-684-8415 and leave a message. I got a couple of messages this week and we'll probably play them next week uh, for the show. So keep them coming and we'll have more. Folks, have a great Mayberry week and we'll see you next time right here on Two Chairs, your Mayberry podcast. Have a great week. Good night.